Good afternoon YouTube, Ian here from Cool Ice Charge Case and Power Supplies. Uh, I've got another little charge case I'd like to show you with this one. Uh, this is a little bit of a quicker case again, it's built on the same uh, platform as my uh, on the go charge cases here. I nearly lost the word in there, I'm having to re-video re re record this because I accidentally turned the camera the wrong way. But anyway, this is, the idea of this case is based on my grab and go cases for the ISDTs, but using a slightly larger case because the customer requested that he wanted to put three ISDT Q6s in his case rather than the single one, and at the same time, of course, a power supply so that he could then use this case from AC or also DC using the input jack and of course then I fitted my usual rotary isolator switch there on, on the case deck if you like so that the customer can then obviously switch between the internal ACs when he's obviously got mains power available and then obviously switch the, change the action of the input output, output connector to an input side only and obviously then uh, plug in a, a, a 12 volt car battery, 24 volt leisure battery or DC LiPo depending on um, what sort of size batteries he wanted to charge. So the idea with the cases was to obviously create uh, a little bit of charging area as well, keep it relatively simple, he didn't want to go too much over the top, he did want uh, some LEDs <coughs> and we settled on some blue ones. Originally I was going to try and sync those into the 10mm polypropylene deck that I've used because that does appear to transmit light quite well as you've seen in some of my other videos. So I was going to do the same principle again and route a channel into the polypropylene and obviously sync the 10mm wide strip of LEDs into it. So then of course then the light transmitted through the plastic as best as it could. Unfortunately due to size constraints within the case and how tightly packed I had to keep the free chargers to achieve the sort of layout I wanted to do I couldn't do that so I've mounted the LEDs like I used to on the inside of the case and surprisingly the the, the brightness of them and the various cutouts and what have you in the deck itself actually grabbed the light still and it transmits quite nicely so it does kind of give a little bit of a halo effect on quite a few of the cutouts if not all of them which is quite good so that's worked out really nice I'm quite pleased with that and the customer's quite pleased with it as well from the photographs I've sent so obviously I'm not going to waffle on too much uh, I would just like to, if I can, plug my 3D printed components for these cases. Oh, you've seen them now in various cases. I design and 3D print my own connector adapters and obviously as and when I need another design, I'll, free, I'll design it, print it uh, and obviously go for any prototyping stages. But what I'm also going to do, and also I have already if you like, these are open to be purchased by you, my customers. So if you are building your own case and you would like some of the connector holders that I've got, contact me. I can obviously 3D print these for you. I'm not releasing the files. They are, they do take me a lot of time. I put a lot of effort into them. So sadly, for those that do have their own 3D printer, this is obviously a sad fact of the matter, but I'm obviously gonna keep the files, but I am capable then of obviously printing them on my own 3D printers and obviously supplying them to you for you. So if you need anything like that, give us a shout. I'd also like to just take a few minutes as well and obviously thank not only my customers, but people that have liked and shared my videos and commented on my videos and my charge case builds mainly, because obviously I'm just a person waffling away in front of the camera here, but at the end of the day, it's my charge cases and the, the effort that I put into them that makes them what they are. And for people then to compliment them and show their appreciation of the time and effort that I put into them is, is very humbling for me. I appreciate all the kind words that people give and I appreciate you people obviously giving my name out to other people as well because they'll lead on to one person, then they'll lead on to more people and that generates business for me. And in my eyes, there is no better advertising than word of mouth from one satisfied customer goes to the next and to the next and to the next and it just keeps going exponentially kind of thing. So that is why I make sure each and every one of my cases is up to a standard that is good enough for me. 
and if it's good enough for me it is good enough for my customers and it shows i've had some great feedback from you from you guys sorry within the helicopter community and the uav community and word is spreading and i appreciate that thank you very much for that please keep going and i thank you all for it but anyway without further ado because i'm waffling on again let me turn this phone round and show you the case itself oh got a little bit of a shot of my bin there my makeshift bin using the bag but anyway this is the case it's a nanook 925 in graphite grey which is the first time i've ever seen this color close up and it's actually quite a nice color i obviously uh spec or should i say i gave the customer a, an option of various cases and this was the one he wanted so it's turned out quite nice obviously i've got the usb port on the left hand side and then on the right is the ac in I quite like doing this. It, it, you, you always think to yourself, oh, I'm, I'm, should I really be cutting holes in an expensive case? But I do quite like having the, the mains power on the side. Unless I'm asked to keep the case 100% watertight, um, I will obviously do this. Because I do feel it, it, it does simplify things a little bit, especially with the power, where the way I mount the power supply is underneath the deck, bolted securely to the bottom of the case itself. Um, I then don't have to run high voltage wires from the, 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 the deck down to the power supplies themselves. I can just obviously have all the high voltage wires then secured nice and neatly in the bottom of the case and then obviously AC in on the side and then basically then any wires then going up from the power supplies themselves up onto the, the deck which is obviously holding the charger and any connectors is low voltage DC stuff. I quite like that. It saves any mechanical stresses or strains where it's not necessary to have them and just make me feel a bit better when these cases go out into the public but anyway let me lift the lid and there we go as you can see we've obviously got the the free openings for the isdt q6s and obviously i've got one of the customers charges here because i i haven't got a q6 here so while i'm 99% confident my cutout is all okay. I do just like to check because obviously if um, the, the the router loot misses a couple of steps and I don't see it then obviously the holes could be not quite right so it's quite good to have so he sent me that and then obviously as my as with my grab and go case or grab and go case the cradle is the cooling air duct again of the charger so obviously the, the charger's got its own little inbuilt fan it pulls cooling air in through the front slots is directed then down through the holder through the charger then and obviously then thrown out the back then via its own little fan out the vent at the back so while I have got additional cooling fans within the case they are just dealing with any warmed air uh, generated by the power supplies themselves in this case which is quite good and they're the usual I think they're the 7030 radio fans or 7530 radio fans Again, they work quite well and don't seem to take up a lot of room, which is quite nice. Again, mounted on 3D printed brackets. And uh, to avoid any unnecessary work with, obviously, mesh grill, I've created like the grills in the actual deck itself, which has worked out quite good. Uh, two to six S balance port then, obviously sunk into the deck itself. So it's flush, obviously held in place. 3D printed XC60 holder which is obviously then secured from the back. Of course, the deck is 10 mil polypropylene, and of course, then wherever I've got any, uh, in this case, M5 mechanical fixings, underneath here, in, uh, screwed into blind holes, is the uh, M5 brass inserts there. So there's obviously no fixing screws or holes seen on the upper deck, which is quite nice. And that's obviously replicated. So that's, if you want to call it charger three, charger two in the middle, obviously the same setup, the 3D printed adapter there a little bit of dust on it we'll get rid of the dust and in the middle I've got the for very surprisingly for the UK we've got some very warm weather uh, in the UK currently so the cooling fan is on on low at the moment so you can hear me talking and uh, the door is open so any flick of dust is coming in and then of course then charger one is here then again um, and what what the plan was originally I normally put my line of cooling slots across the front but I thought it, it, it dawned on me that the char the customer might then lay his batteries in front of each charger. So 
I, I certainly don't want to put air slots then down the front because they will then be covered. So I've, I've literally just put three up each side vertically and that's quite good. So charge a, a LiPo 1 here or whatever, nickel metal hydride, another pack here, another pack here, and then the, the, the charge leads will just plug straight in. It, it'll work quite nice. Nice and neat, nice and simple. Effectively then potentially no need for any adapters if there's XT60s involved. Uh, I think the owner of this case is going to be flying a, a 550X off the top of my head. So he's obviously then making uh, XT60 to XT90 connectors because I've recommended he uses minimum XT90s on there. Rory in this corner then, we've got the, the usual rotary isolator switch. So this will disable the positive wire coming from the inbuilt power supplies in here. So obviously in the on position, they, the, the internal power supplies will then give power to the charger, flick it to off, and then the eagle eyed among you in the top right hand corner, there's an XT90, which is the input and, ex, ex, input and output DC power connector. So when the internal power supplies are running, this will give 25 volts out. And when the rotary switch is in the off position, this XT90 connector then becomes the DC input point. So from here then, obviously you could make up a lead with crocodile clips on the end of an XT90 to plug it in and obviously power off your car battery or so you had an external power supply, then obviously whatever that connector has to an XT90 again and then that would put the DC in. So you can then obviously switch between it and obviously just to be on the safe side, I always put the switch there because the last thing you would want to do is have a LiPo connected here switch then the AC port on which will then obviously power the internal power supplies and then the, the LiPo gets straight 25 volts so to try and avoid that potential issue uh, another little reminder there directly in front of you in plain sight via a label it just avoids any issues just in case I certainly don't want any of my customers to have any issues so let's turn it on flick that to on you can turn it on and off while it's on but I'll do it now before I flick power Flick the AC on, which you heard. The Q6 comes to life because obviously the, uh, the power supplies are now receiving AC, there, so they're giving out their 25 volts. And you can, you can actually see that I'm, these little LEDs, I'm sorry, but the, the strip, this strips of LEDs, I think they're the 50 50 LEDs, and they're not RGB ones, they're just plain blue. I want it blue. They are so bright. It is unreal and obviously the the effect you can just about see them there they're mounted on the side of the case in there but the effect they give when the polypropylene get catches the light and this is one of the things that the customer did say to me oh can you try and make it so the apertures of the chargers glow and sure enough they are it's so I'm, I'm quite pleased it's giving just the right amount so you've got like a little halo glow and i have tried blocking it and i think even when the charger's in there yeah you will because this one's obviously got the charger in and you're still getting the light being caught and you can just about see it actually where the where the fit is tight but not you know there's a little bit of tolerance there kind of thing you can see the little blue line around and of course the balance ports as well and some of the photographs i took last night which i will as normal append to the end of this video they they obviously highlight it because it was a little bit darker it was not quite so bright with the sunshine streaming through the door but there it is in all its glory it's actually going to be quite a nice usable case not too big not too small of course but it's not too big either so it's quite nice to carry around I'm sure the customer will send me a photograph with the when he's fitted his other two Q6's in place and then that'll give a, a true representation of how that deck's going to look but that looks quite nice the, these radial fans work really well there's a nice cooling airflow coming out of them. Oh, it's quite nice on my hands, cools it down. So yeah, really pleased. So that's another one done, onwards and upwards. We've got another case build ongoing at the moment, which is uh, housing a 4010 duo and a 48 volt power supply. And uh, that one should hopefully be finished as well within the next four to five days. So I can send that out to the customer and then start the design. Uh, crack on with the next one in the line. Thank you for watching as always, enjoy your day, stay safe and uh, I look forward to posting another video for you. Take care, bye bye.